In this video today, we're going to talk about rhizotomy or radio frequency ablation, how it can help you, what are the types, and why you need to know this. If we haven't met, I'm Dr. Orlando Landrum, an interventional pain and regenerative medicine specialist who helps patients understand how pain impacts them, why it does, and what you can do about it. In this video today, we're going to talk about endoscopic, percutaneous, and chemical type rhizotomies. So fancy words that we're going to break down in the fullest so you understand exactly what your options are. So first and foremost, we got to talk about anatomy. So from an anatomical standpoint, when we talk about rhizotomy, what are we doing? Basically, we're helping arthritis and we're making that arthritis pain not be as much of a problem. So if you feel pain when you first get up in the morning, when you bend and when you twist, after you've done a hard manual labor, whether you've played golf or wrestled or done gardening and you basically arched your back and put various different strains on that back and you have pain that's that aching pain, that gnawing pain, that pain that responds to a leave or Motrin or another NSAID type treatment, this is the problem. And ways to be able to treat that that aren't reliant on medication are what we're talking about today. So the facet itself is a joint and that joint has innervation, meaning it has nerves that actually connect to it that lets you know it's hurting. Those nerves don't always supply other structures. In some circles, particularly within regenerative medicine and orthobiologic circles, we think that it's a possibility it innervates components of the muscles, like the multifidus, which are muscles that are present in the back. And when you treat it with radio frequency, it can cause atrophy of that muscle, it can cause you to have a weaker back, potentially. However, if you're doing exercises, you're using therapy, you may be able to use radio frequency ablation with no sustainable deleterious effects, meaning you may be able to get by, feel better, and be able to do exercises to keep things going okay. So when we talk about different treatment options for radio frequency or rhizotomy, the chemical treatment would use something like glycerin or glycerol to be able to treat by and injectate a fluid that stops and stuns that nerve for a period of time. The downside to choosing and utilizing liquid is that it can spread. And sometimes it spreads further than what we want. So if it gets outside of the path of what we want and it gets to other important structures like exiting nerve roots or into the central nervous system and the spinal canal, it can cause problems. And so those type of treatment options aren't used as much. They are still used from time to time because the cost is pretty darn cheap. You don't need a machine. You don't need a whole host of different types of gauges and monitors and other types of tests. You basically know where you're going and you give just a small amount and that small amount starts acting and gives you relief. But nowadays, I would say greater than 90%, maybe even almost 95% of treatment options for rhizotomy revolve around the utilization of a radio frequency ablation type machine. And so what does that mean? It means that you have a needle that's insulated to an extent and inside that needle, a filament is placed that basically generates heat. If you need to know more about radio frequency as a whole, please check out our video that we have here that talks about radio frequency or quote unquote burning of the nerves, explains it in detail so you can learn more about it. But what we're going to talk about is traditional radio frequency, which is percutaneous in nature, cooled leaf or cooled radio frequency, which is also percutaneous in nature, or endoscopic rhizotomy or radio frequency, which is different. So the first option, which is traditional, is what most doctors do that traditionally do radio frequencies. You place a needle, you go down to the site, you have an idea about where that nerve root is, but you can't necessarily see it. You place the filament there, you apply heat, and normally you're gonna get relief that'll last you anywhere from six to nine months. You repeat it at that time and you keep going with it. In lieu of that, you could do something that's called cool leaf or cooled radio frequency. Most of my patients, when I talk to them about that, they think that it's actually gonna be a cool sensation like ice, it's not. The cool leaf is a bit of a misnomer. What it does is it applies a cooling to the tip of the needle, which basically makes for a larger burn, quote unquote, larger heat application that distributes itself without causing damage. The reason for why you would want to do this is the innervation to the joint can actually be varied from person to person and from joint to joint. So sometimes when you apply heat in a traditional fashion, you can miss it. Cooled radio frequency cool radio frequency decreases the likelihood of missing. And it can provide a larger lesion, which provides a longer time of pain relief. So instead of the six to nine, sometimes you could be nine to 12 and have even relief longer than that. 
What's the downside? The downside is it's typically a larger gauge needle for most people, not for all. So you have to deal with that a bit. And the utilization of a machine that is specific for that context of delivery of heat. And then finally was this endoscopic rhizotomy that we talked about. And that treatment option basically uses the ability of a camera to see the joint natively without looking at it percutaneously, meaning just assessing it through fluoroscopy through the skin, but able to see where that joint is, where that nerve is on the joint and be able to target it directly, either through the utilization of heat or mechanical means to stop that nerve from complaining at that joint site. The value of doing it in this way is it provides a much longer sustainable treatment option for many people as long as two years and sometimes much longer than that. If you've heard about all these types of rhizotomy, let me know. Please leave that in our comments below. Question of the day. Have you ever had a radiofrequency ablation, a rhizotomy, or a treatment like this for back or neck pain? If so, how long did it work for you? Please let us know in the comments. If you found this video of value, please hit the like button. And if you think videos like this that talk about pain or regenerative medicine or technology to be able to improve your function or ways to be able to assess your body so that you can have more energy, less pain, and really be able to be preventative in nature, then hit the subscribe button. It will help you learn more about these different topics. It'll help us be able to improve our YouTube algorithm so we can grow and help more people. What we want to be able to do is teach you about your different options, teach you how to be able to decrease pain, how to be able to punch pain in the face and get back to the life that you deserve. Thank you.